Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Kaplan, and welcome to the Spin It Social Hour. I am so thrilled to be here with everyone. I am a social media and visual strategist and a former photo editor at the New York Times. I was a supervising photo editor in the New York Times Wire service for over 15 years. So let me tell you about the Spin It Social Hour. The Spin It Social Hour is a true labor of love born out of care and concern for our photo community. I realized that when COVID hit, I needed to give back in a certain way. And the way that I could give back was by making sure that I support our photo community, which has been a part of me for years. So I figured, let me put together a great show that I can have these photographers tell their stories, I can show their work, and I can help them hopefully in the long run when this crisis subsides and hopefully we get a handle on it once again because it seems like things are getting bad in a lot of places again. Um, that we'll be able to get them more work, their names will be out there more, and you will know more about them. That's the bottom line. So I'm thrilled to be here. I've worked with many, many big brands in all, uh, from the Pulitzer Prizes on down. Um, I work with Sri Srinivasan, who's a dear colleague of mine uh, in our Digi Mentors group, doing a lot of work doing full-fledged productions like this for many, many places, um, including Muckrack and others. So, but today, today we're here to welcome a great photographer that I was introduced to recently by a wonderful friend of mine and a great photographer in his own right, the one and only Peter De Silva out of San Francisco. And it was a pleasure meeting Claudia online, the magic of social media, and now bringing her on to see you. So we're gonna take the banners off, we're gonna take everything off the screen, and I'm gonna give you a beautiful intro to her work that she so deserves. Here we go, enjoy it. Claudia Paul is a German-born photographer who has made New York City her home since 2003 shooting commercial and editorial content for over 10 years. No matter the subject, her approach is always personal with the goal of capturing an emotional and authentic image. My work has always been about people. I love the human connection through photography and motion. Whether my subject in front of the lens is a high profile CEO, an artist, or an African child in need. I have a huge passion for working with nonprofits. There is no better feeling than making a difference in the world with my work. Wow, that is just, I love it. I love her words, I love her work, I love everything about this uh, photographer and this woman. It's a pleasure to have her here. Please help me welcome the great Claudia Paul. Hello, Claudia. Hey guys, hey Stefan. How, how are you today? I'm very good. So how, how did you like the intro? <laughs> love it. I, I think I need to take you with me at all times to do this kind of intro, I love it. Because you, know, you, you put it so beautifully. I love that. Really uh, nice. Good morning, Satachi. Good morning, Satachi. We're going to say good morning. Hey, Charles. Hey, Charles is here. My good friend is here. Larry. Larry awesome. Orlando. So nice to see all these, all these lovely. Oh, Tiger. Wow, look at this. Dr. Sujana is here. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so great new show I'll be talking about later in the show to let you know about it. Woohoo! That's I'm wonderful. Tight. I'm psyched that Dr. Sujana is here because she's doing a show about COVID and you've done so much work with Mount Sinai. This is yep. wonderful, I mean, to have her on. So Tim so uh, So once again, Shitachi, thank you, okay. both Tim. Uh, so let's, here we are. Um, you know, Claudia, I met you through the magic <laughs> of social media um, and it's a wonderful story real quick. Uh, I met you through the great Peter De Silva, a friend in common. Yeah. Um, and I, that's why I love social so much, but let's, let's get to, uh, let's get to business here and let's start telling people yeah. about you because that's why we're here. So one of the questions I want to ask you right from the beginning is how did you get started in photography, Claudia? And what was that moment in life that made you say, this is what I'm going to pursue as a career? Yeah, that, you know, it's always a nice question. So, you know, I grew up in Germany, mm -hmm. kind of, I feel like I was always interested in photography, but, you know, you never think of doing this as, as an actual profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, right out of high school, I kind of couldn't really figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And so I decided to be a nanny for a year in New York. So this okay. was my first time, you know, they call au pair. 
it's an easy way to live in a different country, experience what? a different culture. Sure. So I figured, you know, I'll find out what, what my path is doing something like that. And, and it really was like that because I, I basically, I, I got to New York and I just started running around and shooting street photography, you know, like coming from a small town in Germany, being in New York was, I mean, it was mind blowing. What it, is it was the town, just what is so the much town, to see. What is the um, town's name? It's called Ingersheim in Germany. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm talking 7,000 people maybe. Wow. So everybody knows everybody. So yeah, it was a big city for me to move to. And yeah, I just, I was fascinated by everything in New York. So I just ran around in my free time um, doing street photography. And then I actually, through the program, I was, um, I was asked to do some, some school credits and I had to do English that was kind of mandatory, but I also had some extra credits. And so I took a photography class mm -hmm. at a local college um, in actually Long Island. And through that, I feel like I really dove into, you know, the, the, the technique and, and really learned about, you know, how do you, how do you get control over all this stuff? And, and that, at that point, I feel like that was the turning point when I, I realized, you know, this is something I can really get into and this is what some people do for a living. So that kind of started the seed, I feel like. Right. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's the thing when you, you know, you come to New York and it's like being a kid in a candy store, right? Yeah. I mean, because you're like, wow, this is pretty amazing. It's such a big city. It's so crazy busy. Uh, at least it was. And we'll get back to normal. Yes. Uh, we're, work <laughs> we're working on it. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where you're. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it's one of those things where you're in the middle of all this from coming from a town of uh, of 7,000, you know, I mean, that, uh, what, is that like, culture, like what? what is that culture shock like? You know, the thing was, I, New York is funny in that sense. I feel like you, you get to New York and you instantly feel at home, which sounds crazy because, you know, coming from such a small environment mm -hmm. and it is so different, but I think New York has a place for everybody. And I just love the energy and the vibe. And, and, and I think coming from a bit more reserved German culture, mm -hmm. coming to New York where everybody just talks to you and, and, you know, wants to find out who you are and what you're doing. I, I, I was like, wow, this is amazing. People are so open and Absolutely. I, I really connected to that. Uh, just, there's, a, there's a woman, yeah. that, there's a friend of mine who just chimed in, Twyla Duncan. Twyla is exactly that type of person as I am. You'll meet us everywhere you go because we're just people, persons, and we just yeah. love to meet everybody. And Twyla is like my clone in terms of one. In fact, she knows more people than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I right. really fell in love with New York instantly. I mean, it. it yeah, it was That's great. That's and I, great. I still love New York. <laughs> so what was the moment? What was the moment, Clay? You are such a professional. Your technique and your photos are so <laughs> gorgeous. That mm -hmm. what is, it's the truth. What is that moment that made you realize, you know, this is what I'm going to do in life, you know? The moment. It's a good I mean, question. Right. It's a difficult question sometimes. But yeah. What was it? I mean, was it was it walking around with the camera that, you know, it just totally captured your imagination? Was it a certain person you photographed that said, Wow, I'm good at this? Or what was it? And maybe that helped. Actually, I think that kind of reminds me. So during that year as a nanny, you know, I made friends with other nannies and, and she one of my friends to this day. Mm -hmm. She kind of became a little bit of my muse and she was you know, a willing subject. So I felt like she really helped to define that in a sense of like, oh, you know, I can really create things and I can right. shape things and right. I can develop a vision. And right. so she was a big part of that, I would say. And, you know, just, yeah, like you said, learning about the technique and, and finding right. out how, you know, you don't just push the button and you, right. you know, you, you learn how to see light and, right. I was just, I was reading a lot. I was learning from other people, sure. just kind of slowly building mm -hmm. that up. Absorbing all the knowledge. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one right. of the things, uh, so a lot of people from Astoria and the comments here. Alex, that's uh, my good friend, know, also a great photographer. Australia. Uh, Australia. Astoria. <laughs> um, and uh, Paula Kiger, same here, Tim. I'm happiest in New York City. Everybody yeah. agrees with you, Claudia. It's, it's a special place. Yeah. yeah. 
So, um, you know, one of the things, you know, it, what grabbed me was being able to freeze moments in time so beautifully, mm. you know? That's what grabbed me as a teenager yeah. when I first started shooting. And uh, so, so well, thank you for sharing that. And um, so, so I want to ask you, what were you working on before COVID-19 hit, Claudia? And actually, before we go on for a second, I want to let everybody know, please, folks, if you're watching this broadcast, we've got over 20, almost 25 live viewers. Um, please um, share this broadcast on your phone or your computer. Hit the share button. Charles, everybody, hit the share of the live um, broadcast right now. So it amplifies Claudia's work, gets her name out there more. That is the way is by sharing. So thank you. Thank I will hit people over the head with that during the entire show. I give it one big mention and the rest is on the banners. <laughs> That's right. No, you're great like that, Stefan. Well, you know, I want people to follow your Instagram. We'll have that up, your website. We'll talk all about that. But so what were you working on? Sorry to have cut that off before COVID-19 hit. And what are you working on now? And let me break it down a little more. Could you, and I'll leave this up for you. Could you share some insight into what you've been doing to stay creative and busy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. I, yeah, I actually, I remember exactly because, so I work with L'Oreal. Um, they're one of my clients and we were actually out in Arizona about early mid-March. Okay. And that was basically the last job I did before COVID hit. And, and it had kind of started, we've been reading about it a little bit, but you know, the the photo shoot still happened over there. And But I do remember coming back from that at the airport, I was with a colleague of mine and we took a cab together and the cabbie had a mask on and I think had, you know, plastic sheet up between us and him. And that just hit me and I was like, wait, what happened while we were gone? It, it just, it was kind of like you're in this weird futuristic movie all of a sudden. And right. that was, yeah, so that was mid-March, I would say. Um, and then, yeah, and then the lockdown started and, and I was practically not allowed to work anymore, which was the strangest thing in the world because, you know, I was never not allowed to work. Um, and you know, we were all, especially as photographers, we're used to always being busy and go, 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 and right. always being on the run. And it was very odd. Um, so it's yeah, kind of- it been, I mean, for so many photographers, I mean, that's the reason I started this show, the Spin a Social Hour, is I wanted to help photographers because no matter who you are, no matter what you've been working on, everybody is affected by this one way or the yeah. other whatever level you're at of a photographer your business your life your everything is being impacted by this moment in time and it's been tragic and it's been very very hard on people you know yeah yeah it, it, so, it's just like you said it, it, it affects all of us in different ways and it's you know it's never a solid right. like steady line it's just kind of right. goes up and down every day Right. Now, I know, Claudia, that let's dig right into this because this is so so timely. Of course, it is the time and it is the moment uh, <laughs> that you got a very interesting uh, phone call one day. I read I do my research. <laughs> you got an interesting phone call one day that basically from Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. uh, saying that, hey, you know, we've done all this great work. You've done all this great work for us. We love, we love everything about you. Would you come on and work with us as we're preparing for this and in the middle of this onslaught with the pandemic? And why don't you tell us about that? Because I know you like didn't, well, you aren't on the floors with patients, of course, that's not your thing, but you were setting Mount Sinai up for the future of storytelling of what they're doing to, to, to take care of the public and us and thank God for our doctors and nurses and, and medical institutions. Yeah, so so like you said, you put it actually perfectly. So the Montani has been a client of mine for a few years. So, you mm -hmm. know, normally I would go in and, and you know, take portraits of doctors and do their promotional work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was always time and setup and lighting and all that stuff. and. When this happened, yeah, I was kind of surprised because I didn't think that they would call me in to shoot and to actually more document in a more photojournalistic way right. what they've been doing. And like you said in the beginning, it was a lot of construction. They were restructuring the whole um, hospital, you know, building extra beds, setting up tents for testing. And, you know, they realized this is a historical time and they need to they need to capture that and they need to document that for their archives, for 
you know, articles they're writing. Mm -hmm. So it kind of started slowly, you know, they called me in once and then again, and it kind of became this ongoing uh, documentation. And it also kind of morphed from doing more technical stuff at first with the tents and the construction to then okay, we need to talk to this nurse, we need to photograph this doctor. Yeah. And so slowly we kind of started going into the hospital more and more, yeah. which in the beginning, of course, I was a bit nervous about. Of course. Because, you know, everybody around me said, well, well what, why would you want to go into a hospital right oh. now? Are you crazy? You know, I mean, it, it was scary. And sure. But what what it felt like for me was really that, I told myself this, you know, this whole thing, why they called me, why I'm supposed to do this job, it, it happened for a reason. And yeah. I think they came to me for a reason. And it's kind of my, it's almost my duty at that time to document and to give these people a voice. And so I kind of pushed that aside, the, the fear and the nervousness. And just that, you know, this is what I have to do right now. And after that moment, I, I felt good about it. And I felt confident and yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, in it's interesting when I've never tackled something like a pandemic, uh, shooting things, uh, Me you know, neither. but right. None of, I mean, none of us have that kind of a silly statement there, but you know, but anyway, the thing is that many photographers have been in very tough situations, whether it's conflict zones. Uh, I mean, I edited photographers from around the world over the years that were in many, many conflict zones, including the wars. Uh, Dr. Sujan says, Sujana oh. says, Sujana, sorry, says the depth of these pictures is remarkable. You've captured the humanity behind the PPE. That is just Thank you, you doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to get that feedback instantly. That's why I love doing this show. Uh, we get the comments live from Facebook and other sources, and we're able to put them right up there so people can. This is about a conversation, too, you know? Mm -hmm. So, what I was going to say to you is that. You know, it's like any photographer, when you get into a situation, you're you're kind of going in a little cold at first. You're kind of like not, you know, um, I don't want to say warmed up, but, you know, you have to get used to the environment. You have to get used to what's going on. There's so much going on in a hospital, mm -hmm. especially God help us during a pandemic. But you've handled it beautifully and brilliantly, Claudia. Thank you. Know, you. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you, you, you're right. It, it, it was, um, it, you know, it was such a different pace, such a, right. you know, no lighting, you know, very much photojournalistic. You do what right. you can and, right. and, you know, move, 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 because we couldn't hang out there. Right. Um, for, like this, for example, is a COVID floor. So mm -hmm. this was where all the patients were. And right. obviously we don't want to linger there for too long. And right. we also, don't want to be in everybody's way, keeping right. them from doing their work. So that was my biggest concern, actually. You know, what, I, you know and, a, and a very valid concern. Um, yeah. I, I go into supermarkets and everything now and everywhere I go, I have three different types of masks and I make sure that where I'm going, I have the serious mask. I'm going to be around too many people, which I try not to be. Uh, but sometimes some stores can get a little crowded, but I'm trying not, I'm trying to avoid those. Yeah. Uh, stores I go to are very good. But my point is that one of the things I wanted to touch on before I go on uh, my stores rant is uh, <laughs> is the the amazing amount. It flabbergasted me. Uh, I've been in hospitals. I've even done a little work with a couple in the past, but I've never seen, I mean, so much equipment in one zone for so much. Look at this. I mean, oh, okay. Wow. I mean, it's overwhelming. And, yeah, so f maybe for the people that don't know how this was set up, so what right. they did when they converted regular floors to what they call COVID floors, right. they basically put up these glass or plexi plexiglass separated separations between, okay. you know, so there's basically an extra layer before you get into the patient's room. And so then they moved all of this technical equipment right. outside of the room Right. So, so yeah, I'll let you go back to the picture. No, no, that's fine. So basically, fine. yeah, so they moved all the tech gear outside of the room so the nurses and doctors can monitor from the outside and mm -hmm. only go into the patient when they absolutely need to. Ah. So it was basically helping, you know, keeping them safe, mm -hmm. keeping everybody safe. And, and so they could constantly monitor, you know, the, the um, oxygen levels, the blood, all that stuff. And then they would go into double doors with all the PPE. And as soon as they come out, 
they strip all that off, change into new gear. So it was, it was quite, I mean, it was every time they did that, it took, you know, 10 minutes or so mm -hmm. to switch, but you know, it was needed for all the, the, well, the safety. Only, the only thing I'm not hearing out of your mouth, which wouldn't surprise me because God help all these, you know, my heart is with all these doctors and nurses. And I'm going to say this because I really feel it's part of this conversation. It needs to be said that people wear your masks, take care of yourselves, take care of others, and take care of our doctors and mm -hmm. nurses. They are putting their lives on the line every single moment of every day for us. Treat this with the respect and the care and the concern that it needs to be treated with. And I'm gonna say it straight like that because we all need to do our part. Please, these yeah. people are risking their lives for us. It's not fair to them and it's not fair to everybody in, in the world at large. That's my piece. Yeah. I've said it, I'm done. <laughs> 100%, yeah. That is know. so important. And I yeah. mean, I feel I feel really lucky that I got to meet all these amazing workers. And, and I mean, obviously after being in there, right. you cannot not take this seriously. Right. So, Edward, so Edward says, sorry, Claudia, I'm sorry. I just want to make mm -hmm. sure that our viewers are acknowledged. Amazing shots that remind me of automotive assembly lines. Mm -hmm. Scary enough, it does. The scale, Edward, Edward's a big fan and a big supporter of the show. The scale of this situation is that big. Wow, great yeah. capture. Yeah, Edward, uh, Claudia is magnificent and thank you for your input as always. Um, Claudia Godi says, exactly, wear a mask and be respectful of fellow that, human beings. That, that's my Italian counterpart, my Italian Claudia. <laughs> okay, Claudia. Thanks for uh, being here. Thank you for being here, dear. Thank you so much. Wonderful to meet you. Uh, we've got a lot of comments, so let's get to some here. Susan Stein uh, says, uh, Pazinski, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, watching from the Metro North Station on my way into the city. Susan, I like it. Your portrait even has a mask on. Take care of yourself. Be well. Uh, do we have any others? We've got a load of comments, it looks like, 39 uh, counting. But anyway, we'll get to more. But, you know, I went through these and I curated these from your work because you have so many great shots and so many important shots. But some of these really caught me, like this one of this doctor in the in the wait in the uh, elevator. They're all they're all must be so exhausted, you know. Yeah, this one actually just quickly. It was a great interesting moment because you know we were going to. He was going to show us a different area, and he leaned against that wall, and he mm -hmm. just kind of looked so tired to me. He was just coming um, out of his night shift. And I, I, I raised the camera and snapped this picture of him mm -hmm. and he laughed and he looked at me, he's like, why are you taking this picture of me in the elevator? What, what's, and I said, because it tells your story exactly. and it, it shows the work and he really understood. And it, it was, it was, it was one frame. That was it. Yeah. But you know, that's the kind of stuff that people don't see normally. And like he well, was working 12 hours and. You, cap to go you home. captured it beautifully. And what really strikes me about this photo, I didn't even know that doctors use pagers anymore. I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Oh, and they go off constantly. <laughs> Yeah, no, you you know, in the old days, everybody had a beeper, but doctors now still use them because I guess in hospitals, it's the way of getting getting the signal that you're needed, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but anyway, you know, so, you know, but just just the beauty of these and it shows you the, 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 just, I, I love doctors and nurses. I mean, they're so important. They're, they're the most important thing right now. And there's, they're doing such an amazing job. God bless them all. Um, they take care of each other. I love the yeah. care in this photo. They make sure they're suited up correctly. They make sure that nobody goes into a room without what they need and that nothing's loose. Uh, the, the amount of equipment is just overwhelming. Look at the intensity on this photo. What was this about, Claudia? So, they, yeah, but while we were there, you know, they had one patient that, that wasn't doing well. And so they kept, they kept discussing and trying to figure out how to, you know, up his oxygen levels. And, you know, there was a lot of debating and discussing going on. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we were, I was there with my client who, who was always with me, who works in their marketing department. And both of us, you know, we were emotionally exhausted after this. Yeah. This, you know, even it was an hour or so on the COVID floor, and wow. I, I needed a lot of time to process that just what I yeah, saw. Yeah. And it probably takes a once you get home to process it too, yeah. you know. Because yeah. you know, I, I, tell me about this. Let's uh, let's let's uh, just get into this for a second here. This was, I if I read it correctly, a meditation room for the doctor. Yeah, 
Beautiful, yeah. That, and that was one of the many measures that the hospital took to help yeah. their staff. And I'm, yeah, they I'm just so set happy. up this relaxing, very yeah. zen room I'm where so you can see a campfire. And and the doctors and nurses, they loved it there. You know, this guy actually specifically, after I, I took photos of him, he said, I think I'm just gonna stay in here for a while. I, I don't wanna I mean, leave. Can you and that tells you a lot. What a beautiful yeah. room and things to say. Thank you, Mount Sinai, for doing that for your doctors and nurses, for our doctors and nurses. Yeah. Thank you to every institution for taking care of them because they are the frontline heroes and we love them all. So, um, and look at this massive undertaking uh, of setting things up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And also uh, earlier you saw, unfortunately, you saw the refrigeration trucks outside too. Yeah. That must have been a moment when you saw those trucks um, that that really yeah. hit you that said, wow, I mean, this is this is insane, tragic and so sad, you know? Yeah, it was definitely a goosebump kind of moment, that, yeah. you know, because you walk by and you don't even notice first and then you realize what it is. And, you know, it's yeah, just, I'm just to briefly go back to it here. That's why I love having these presentations ready so I can just sit back. I don't yeah. I didn't get through them that fast, but I wanted to get back to this one. But, you know, wow. I mean, scary, man, as scary as it gets. But let me get back over here real quick. And, you know, I do know we'll talk about this in a minute, but you've done a lot of those portraits that are on the wall, right? Yeah, exactly. So so normally this is a beautiful wide open atrium. It's kind of the main entrance of the hospital. Right. And, and we have all along those walls, we have what they call the innovator wall. And it was a lot of, you know, doctors, scientists that have done remarkable work. Right, right. And they, you know, they got featured and, and yeah, they look beautiful. And, but and, then, and then it was turned into this, right? <laughs> this, yeah, this was um, one of the tents that they set up in Central Park. Oh wow! Which you know they were doing in uh, collaboration with a nonprofit, and and this just gave them what they call overflow capacity. So, if they ran out of space in the hospital, they could put patients there, and it was up for a good month and a half or so, wow. and they treated a lot of people there. Well, you know what's equally as tragic, and I haven't brought this into the conversation. I've waited for the right moment because there is no right moment. This is the moment uh, to talk about. The, and we're not going to get knee deep into it, but you can't avoid it. It's it's the time, moment of our time uh, with all of this uh, racism and violence and and uh, brutality against uh, African American people and people of color. We've all I, I've had it. We've all had it, and we're not going to stand for it anymore. Uh, we should never stand for it. Silence was never an option, uh, as Adam Stoltman said to me. Uh, and other people, and it's true. So, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was go into this next part um, about Black Lives Matter and the protest of mm -hmm. doctors and go into this for a few minutes here and give it the respect that it deserves. Because what a great bunch of medical professionals taking a stand, going out there and making everybody understand that we took an oath, as this sign says, to do no harm. Uh, but silence is harm. Black mm -hmm. lives matter. And they've always mattered. And so thank you for capturing these beautiful photos, Claudia. Yeah, it, it, it felt it was interesting because when this whole thing happened, I wasn't really a big part of any other protests. But when I found out about what specifically the medical world was doing, how they were stepping up, even though they're coming out of such an exhausting time and such a tough time already, I just felt like I feel such a connection to them. So I said, you know, let me go there and let me let me see what they're doing. And, and I, I'm really glad I did because um, it's, it's just very touching. We're glad you did, Claudia. And we're gonna go through some of these. I mean, God bless George Floyd and his family. Um, what a, what an absolutely just most horrific and disgusting act. Uh, my mother was a police officer for almost 20 years. One of the first women cops to patrol with the NYPD armed with the men. And let me tell you something. My mother went through her fair share of stuff. My mother always treated everybody with respect and, and a majority of police officers do. There's a, there's a lot of work to be done in this society and we're going to fix it and we're going to make sure of it. 
but um, you know, uh, I'm I'm thankful for your work on on this uh, movement here, and also these photos. What powerful photos, Claudia? What what? I mean, you captured it so beautiful. Talk about this moment here, please. Yeah, this was really beautiful. So this was at Mount Sinai Morningside, which is just a smaller hospital up actually close to where I live in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And they did this beautiful, um, they basically sent out a message to all of their staff and they said, we're going to do a, a long moment of silence, which was exactly the amount of time that George Floyd was, he was held down. And, you know, the whole hospital came out to this, they flooded the streets around the hospital. And they, you know, the 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 yeah. big boss, he held a very powerful speech, and then they went into the moment of silence. Yeah. And I like tiptoed around during the moment of silence to capture these images. And I, I mean, it was a really, really beautiful moment. It was, it was very touching. I, I had moments where I almost didn't want to take photos because I felt like I, I should just stand and be part of it. I know. But then again, you know, it was important to capture them and it is it was really it was a it was a, a very warm hearted, a very beautiful, a very positive moment, yeah. which I loved. Um and just that yeah, the solidarity. This that, photo, wow, when I saw this photo, I mean the moment that you grabbed right here, because you know, you do a lot of studio work, yeah. you do a lot of uh all this professional work for all these great nonprofits that we'll talk about briefly and other things by the way please check out claudia's website and her instagram learn more all about her work the claudia paul is a phenomenal photographer i'm honored to have her here and to show her work but this photo really grabbed me because it, it and they all do but this one just speaks volumes dr sujana mm -hmm. says it's amazing to see us show our opinions out loud like this yeah, yeah it is and doctors don't mm -hmm. normally do these things but you know what doctors have to also be a part of this and take a stand and make people understand that they're out here to save lives and we don't want to be helping people that are unnecessarily brutalized and other things you know yeah. and, and other things so anyway um just just beautiful work uh powerful photo here powerful um yeah you know i love this claudia i <laughs> I, I wanted to hug you when i saw this photo <laughs> You, you. I know you're a hugger. I read that about. I am a big hugger. I I'm miss a big it too. So I miss so, it so much. So right now we're gonna give each other a big virtual hug. <laughs> yes. Here. <laughs> but, but this moment here, the peace doctor. Tell me about this. Yeah. So she uh, apparently I learned that later. She's been at a lot of the protests, and this is her like go-to outfit. And I love it. I think she's been covered in the news a lot, actually. But yeah, it's just um, she she held some speeches at the at their protest, and I just loved the message. Oh, I, love I mean, I'm I'm a very peaceful, very uh, loving person, and so I think her approach to to be you know to be warmth and to be love and all that, I, it just spoke to me and you know, no, very powerful. I, I love it, and you know what I love about it most is this is you know of course you captured it from behind. I always teach people you know not everything always has to be captured from the front. You want to be able to read a moment too of what's going on, and you know this was the the right moment, the right mm. capture, everything. But you're so you're such a professional. You're you know uh, you've done so much, and I love seeing the side of your work because you do so much studio photography yeah. that I love seeing this photojournalistic aspect of your work because this is important because you are so multi-dimensional and that's all photographers need to be that way. Dan Lane Williams says, hey, good Dan. morning. Uh, let's go through some more quick things here, uh, comments and, and good mornings and other things if we can uh, to make sure that we acknowledge everybody. I see tons of stuff here, uh, but you know, uh, it's been flowing in. But one of the things I also wanted to talk about while we're here is this amazing uh, work. I'm going to zoom past these because uh, the great thing to do with this is I can do that. Let's talk about your incredible studio work and let's start with the creme de la creme. The director, <laughs> hey, we have to say it when we have to say it, the Met. The Met. In New York, I've been in the Temple of Dender. I've been in the yeah. Met numerous times. I'm dear friends with the ex-CDO 
of the Met, Sri Srinivasan, who was there for three years, did an oh, wow. incredible job there. And this is the director um, and uh, just an amazing, amazing uh, shot. Tell, tell me, what is it like to work with somebody like the director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art? Yeah, it was. Uh, this was an assignment actually for a German magazine. So um, I met up with a writer who, who did his interview. And I, I have to say, I was nervous because, you know, I did my research and I By read way, about I'm him. Sorry, and... I don't mean to interrupt you. I have to, though. Max Holland, let's acknowledge his name because I can't believe I didn't say his name. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Claudia. Yeah, so he, so I, like I always do, I Google people beforehand and, mm -hmm. and I, I saw, you know, what a big figure he is in the art world. So I, I was nervous mm -hmm. because, you know, with those kind of assignments, you have very limited time. You know, these people are so busy. Yeah. So, so, but the good thing was we did get a little time with his assistant to do a location scout, which is so helpful. Right. So we walked around and, and I remember the Temple of Dender and, I know that the light is beautiful in there. So I was like, can we please take the photos in there? Is that okay? And they, they, they agreed. Great. And he, I have to say he was, you know, he's, he was busy. This was actually his first week of taking over oh, wow. the job. So you can imagine he was booked back to back to back with meetings and trying to figure it all out. And, but he was very graceful with and gracious with his time. You know, he didn't rush me. Very, very nice guy, I have to say. say. You you picked the right part of the Met because I love the Temple of Dender. I was there to do a live social media event that I covered with Sri Srinivasan and our DigiMentor nice. group. We covered uh, the Global Teacher Prize that handed out $1 million every year, hands out $1 million every year to one teacher for making a huge difference in the world. And this year, uh, we were, last year we were there with the teacher. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. I apologize. It'll come to me, but right now at the second. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's so much information to keep track of these days. But uh, check out Global Teacher Prize, Teacher of the Year 2019, uh, and you'll find her amazing teacher. Uh, thank you for everything she does. But my point is that it was held in the Temple of Dender, the reception. And oh my God, it, they first they had the prize in Dubai and then they mm. came to the reception. And what a great moment to be doing social media live, covering it as I do with our, my colleagues in the Met at the temple. So yeah. I know that feeling of being somewhere like that, like you were and capturing somebody so important and doing such important work in one of the premier institutions in the world. Yeah, yeah. which so, is currently closed and we can't enjoy it. So. I know, yeah. it's killing me not to go to museums and libraries. Ah. Yeah, well, so we'll, yeah, it'll be beautiful to it, be it'll go back again. there. It'll happen, yeah, yeah, it'll happen again. But what I want to move to now, Claudia, because you have so much, is I want to move on to your great video work because you also do amazing video work with another company you founded called Dopplinger. Doppelganger. Doppelganger, <laughs> sorry, Doppelganger, uh, which is a, a great, uh, specializing in storytelling for nonprofits, startups, and small businesses. Check them out at doppelgangermotion.com. Uh, Claudia's work with that is amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to it and not play around here so we don't lose time. Yeah. And uh, because we want to show this wonderful video uh, that you did as part of your work. So let me get to it. And it's going to be wonderful. You guys are going to love this. And it is right here. And you're going to love this. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to mute myself as soon as this comes on. Oops. Sorry, folks. Give me one second here. I just want to make sure that I mute my microphone real I think movement is the key to life. And uh, I approach design with that in mind with not only the fabrics that I choose, but also the cuts and the way that it will fall on the body. As a designer, I take a lot of inspiration from the beach. My muse, Maya Garcia, who's a dancer, reminds her students constantly that we're made pretty much of water. And um, how that relates to the beach is kind of ironic, but it makes sense because I'm so, engulfed by her fluidity and movement, and that's what I find at the beach. 
my passion is really to make people feel good, not just look good. Uh, if I can contribute to that through my design, then that's so much more important than just fashion. <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. I loved it. The fluidity in that moment, I mean, and uh, the beautiful moves in capoeira, I have to say it the way it needs to be said. Yeah. There's no turning back from saying that the right way. If you don't know how to say it, don't say it. <laughs> Capoeira. <laughs> so I'm going to now bring on a special added guest today to let you talk to let him talk about this beautiful work you did. The wonderful and one and only designer uh, and fashionista, Carlton Jones. Carlton, Carlton welcome to the Spinach Flower. <laughs> how are you? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I can hear him. Um, mute it. Yeah. No. I can hear him well. Okay, good. Okay. No, you're fine. Okay. You're good. So, Carlton, welcome. Uh, Carlton, what was it like to have somebody like Claudia do such a great piece of work for your, for you and your wow. business? Wow. Um, you know what? That was that was such an inc uh, incredible opportunity for me. Uh, I was honored that Claudia even asked me to be a part of this series and to be the first in that series. Um, it was the first time that I'd actually sort of, um, I suppose, put it together in, in a concise statement how my two biggest passions came together. So it was really cool how you know effortless that it came together. Like she made me feel so comfortable. Um, it was something that was always floating around in my mind, how they related to each other, but it really came together in this video. And uh, she captured how my two worlds collided. It was really, really fantastic. You know, I love that. And I have to tell you, I was, I, I've watched all her videos. I had to show that one. And then this is the magic of what I do in social media and what we do. And it's beautiful because I just connected with you yesterday after I saw it. I said, I have to get him on. <laughs> I have to have this, this man on because he does beautiful work. He's got beautiful moves. He has a great presence about him. And I, I could tell that you two probably had a great connection, you know? Oh my God. It was, it so was everybody really good. Everybody him too. <laughs> yes, we have, we're showing all your information, Carlton, on the bottom. So uh, we'll make yes. sure that people know about your Instagram and make sure that they follow your website. And yeah. uh, um, I hope I, you know, I, I think you're a fashion stylist extraordinaire. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, I've, I've been styling for most of my life, but design is the latest chapter of what I'm doing. And um, it was great to have that exposure with Claudia. She's a joy to work with. I'm learning so much more about you watching this. So this has been really Aww. fantastic. Thank you, Stefan. Well, thank you. And you know what? That is my goal, Carlton, is to bring on these photographers from around the world every week so that they can tell their story, so that they can share their passion, so that they can share their work, so that when this crisis subsides, or hopefully we get a handle on it, that they'll be getting the work they need because we're all taking big hits and it's very hard. You know, Sutachi says, uh, let's go back to that for one second. Wow, what a nice surprise. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm like you. I'm watching you, Shitachi. You're a live streaming master. And I love the element of surprise. And I love bringing people <laughs> on. And I connected with Claudia. That's the magic of social media. I mean, Cole and I were texting back and forth, Claudia, last night. Claudia, tell us about how you felt working with Carlton. Well, I mean, so I, I always feel like, you know, you get connected with people for for a specific reason. And I you know, I feel that special connection with Carlton. So when I feel like, yeah, you must have mentioned to me at some point that you do capoeira and <laughs> immediately my mind goes to, I mean, it, it's so photogenic. I mean, it's such a beautiful art form. And so, so, so I was kind of trying to, to figure out how to visually put that together. And and I just, yeah, it was it was so much fun. I just, I could have watched you all day long, Carlton, <laughs> just doing that. And I, I love that also there's like, I don't know if people caught that, but like you kind of break out into a smile it, with one of the moves because we were, I was basically crouched down and he was trying to lift <laughs> his leg over me as wow. close as possible. And without kicking it was just was funny <laughs> without kicking me. Yes. And he did that beautifully. <laughs> I have um, to tell you, his moves are, I, I, oh my God, it makes me want, I'm not the most limber person in the world, and I have my fair share of 
of getting this. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> but, but man, I, 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 I need to learn and, and learn a little of capoeira because, man, it is beautiful the way you move. It seems like it just yeah. allows your body, to, like you said, to move like water, you know? Yeah. You know, it, it's, 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 I had never done any dance or martial arts or anything like that before I saw capoeira. I uh -huh. saw it, um, so I performed at, at the Joyce Theater with Dance Brazil wow. and it changed my life. It wow. really did. It, mm. The way it translates to so many other, so many other portions of life with this right. sort of go with the flow attitude. Right. Um, it's really been an incredible journey. And, and although I've been doing it for almost 20 years, right. Party is the first person that captured it on video um, yeah. in that manner. <laughs> so I was really well, happy to have this body of work and also the intention behind what she's doing for small businesses, entrepreneurs and, and non-for-profits. Like it was like a gift from, you know, the universe coming. Yeah. So, I well, love she, having this body. She, she is a gift from the universe because yeah. of her work, because of her <laughs> attitude, because of her ways. Um, you know, Peter De Silva, who was somebody uh, that introduced me to Claudia, um, you know, told me I had to check her out, and I made sure that I did. So, you know, why don't we have a little fun here? Actually, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we bring on Peter? Peter oh my God, Claudia, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> I love it. Claudia, you should know me by now. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> this no, this is so special. I love this. I that everybody's here, and you know, everybody's so amazing and loving and i this yeah it's such a great community well i want to you know quickly acknowledge behind the scenes and we'll bring him on in a few but uh i want to quickly acknowledge uh the person who's helping drive all the captions and everything else flavio masson by the way who just chimed in is from mm -hmm. brazil he's a very dear friend of mine who actually helped me get my big start in as a as a social media visual strategist flavio i love you man flavio masson um, uh, I, he, he's a photographer too. I'm having you on Flavio one day. <laughs> but anyway, my point is that I wanted him to tune in to see your capoeira moves, uh, Carlton, because they are the, they, I'm going to use an old school term here. They are the, <laughs> Muito obrigado, Flavio. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but, uh, Jonathan Borstein is behind the scenes. I'm going to add him real quick just to say hello, Jonathan. Thank you for helping us with everything. Sure. Uh, for driving the car, a quick, uh, I know you love to give the single quick notes, a quick single note about yourself, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan Borstein here, a full-time flaneur, sometime writer, part-time tech, at your service. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Jonathan is amazing. He's been helping me. I brought him on as my co-producer because I wanted to make this a full-fledged production. And uh, I love this. So anyway, uh, Carlton, meet Peter. Peter, meet Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this Great reminds moves. This always reminds me of the Thank old days. Peter. <laughs> this always reminds me of the old days of I'm dating myself here, but of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Peter, you know, I thank you so much for introducing me to Claudia and, you know, and letting me know about her because you said her work was brilliant. And more importantly, you said she was an incredible human being. And thank you so much. No, you know. she's, Claudia is the best. Um, I mean, from day one when we met and then every time I come to New York, we see each other. Um, museums. I, she's invited me into her home. Um, we have these connections. I think the last trip, uh, we went to the gallery and, um, mm -hmm. who was that? Um, it was who, at the Soho gallery. Who was with you that, that day? Um, so uh, many people. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, no. He had the connection with Mexico. Um, Mexico. I'm blanking. Okay. Sorry. German friend. But, uh, God, I forgot his name. Oh, so, Another uh, Stefan. Yes, um, yes, Stefan, and then Stefan and then we had Falke, yeah. with, uh, a few more photographers from Mexico and Tijuana, who were my friends, yeah. um, both there and here in San Francisco. And it's just like every time we go out, there's just like somebody we know. Um, she's introduced me to other people in New York, and and it's just been amazing. 
Hey, Claudia, remind me for a second. That's how many uh, things I've been tabbing over to show all your incredible work. I lost track of one thing. I'm not ashamed to say it. Of Peter's photo. What section of your website is it in? I know it's somewhere. Oh, do you remember? Um, I would say under casual, but. Yeah, I think it, I thought I, it was, I thought it was under casual. Um, it should but, be. Yeah, I, or it might not be on the website. Uh, okay, maybe I don't it. have it. So um, oh, sorry about yeah, that. The, I wanted That's to show right. this beautiful photo that Claudia took of you. But what I can do real quick is I wanted to go to, uh, you know what? I don't know if that's going to be there. So let's stick to the game plan here um, and let's get not get sidetracked. But anyway, uh, Claudia, <laughs> has some amazing pictures of Peter. You'll be able to find, her, uh, find them online. Um, but, you know, getting back to everything, Peter, I just wanted to give Claudia a, a big surprise uh, with you coming on. And, uh, you know, it's wonderful just to bring you on even for a few seconds to Thank show you. the wonderful digital connection. Because yeah. social media, as with Carlton, all of this can be used for so much good. Please, folks, use social media for social good, as I say, and stop using it for all these other ills in the world. There's so much good that can be done, and Claudia is a part of it. Peter's a part of it. He was a previous guest. By the way, check out my Spin It Social Hour on YouTube and find Peter's interview with it. The beginning in and of itself is worth every ounce of your time <laughs> just for the classic music that I bumbled with that ended up being on with his photos, and it was a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Peter's work is fantastic. Really, you have to follow him. Check yep. him out. He's yep. a master. I really, yep. I learn a lot from Peter Absolutely. all the time. Thank you, Claudia. Same with you. I, so I, Peter, the work you did at Sinai was just amazing. Um, and I, I, I commend you for everything that they were asking for because you did an amazing job. You delivered. Thank you me. delivered. Yep, you delivered. Alex yeah. says, Alex said, this is such a fantastic community. Wow. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Alex, because that's what I'm trying to build here. Stefan, thank you for that sentiment. Bravo. Listen, guys, everybody, Charles, everybody, thank you, Charles. Oh, you know what? I think he gave you a link to the photo of Peter. Oh, that's okay. Charles is, well, let's... That's my friend Charles. He's okay. he's on it. <laughs> okay. I don't, let me see if I can grab that from the if comments. You can do that. Uh, I don't know if I can. Hold on one second. Uh, give me, I don't think I can. Sorry. Okay, I'm yeah, it's going to be a difficult one. That's a trick with StreamYard that might be a little difficult. So, oops. Uh, so let me go back to my section here. But Charles, thank you. Um, I'll try to uh, show it, but check Peter out, Peter De Silva. Um, and you'll find uh, the photos of Claudia. Um, I, I actually, you know what I'll do, folks? I'll put it in some of the Facebook posts in the comment, uh, in the in the uh, Facebook posts on the Stefan Spinnett social Facebook page. Anyway, let's get back to business here. Um, uh, Peter, uh, I'm sorry about the community. That's what we're trying to build here is a great community with these photographers to show off their work, to let everybody know. So find Peter's interview. Peter, thank you. Hold on, do not leave because one of your photos is my one of my photos of the week. So I want to show it and I want you to be back on for a minute. So please stay in the studio behind stage, okay? Right. Okay, thank you, Peter. Bye, Colton. Bye, okay. Claudia. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so stay there. Carlton, I mm -hmm. want to get back to you for a brief moment. Uh, tell everybody quickly how they can find you again so they can know about your work. And I want to learn a more, much more about you after we're done with this in the near future. And I want us to have a great chat. Thank you for becoming a mm -hmm. quick new friend and a wonderful new connection here. Tell people about you, please. Um, well, you can find me at carltonjonescollection.com, um, as well as carltonjonesnyc.com. That showcases more of my work as a stylist. Mm -hmm. The Carlton Jones Collection is my work as a designer. Um, my work has actually been pivoted through COVID because uh, after months of quarantine gardening, <laughs> I was inspired <laughs> to actually make masks, which... Um, also in part due to some of the incredible images that I've seen and um, and just the need for, to find something comfortable for myself. It sort of, it pivoted my business in a way that um, I could have never expected after a, a brief write up from the Huffington Post. And so I've been running to catch up making these masks ever since, but they're really beautiful if people are really serious about um, 
their well their wellness and, and okay. safety in a stylish manner, please check them out because they're pretty cool. Okay. They're, well, uh, really they, beautiful. Where, where can they find those, Carlton? CarltonJonesCollection.com. Hold on. Carlton. Carlton Jones Collection. Dot com. Yes. Hold on one second. So, let's, yeah, it's um, the excessive one of, okay. there you go. There, I wanted to put that up there so everybody can see it. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We mean business here, man. <laughs> uh, well, you know, listen, we've got to get you guys business. we got to keep everybody moving here, including myself. Always looking yes. for new jobs, always looking for new opportunities with every organization. I uh, love what I do. I hope the passion comes through, just like with Carlton's work and Claudia's work. So look us all up, folks. But CarltonJonesCollection.com and make sure you find his work. Stay in touch with him. Find him on Instagram. Everywhere he is, Carlton, thank you so much for being here. Um, wonderful being connected with you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you later. This was a pleasure, and I'm sure the beginning of much more. Thank you. All so right, guys. Much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was wonderful. Claudia, I hope I gave you some surprises there. What a treat. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I try to make this special. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, it's a, It really is my heart. I love uh, making people smile as you do. And Alex says, wow, these masks looks fab. Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, let's let's do this real quick. Carlton, Carlton, sorry, uh, C-A-R, Carlton. Carlton Jones. Uh, what was it? Carlton Jones Collection. Fashion? Collection. CarltonJonesCollection.com. Uh, yeah, they're beautiful uh, fabric masks. I've seen okay, them. Let's see if we can find them real quick. More. Uh, let's see. Collections. Uh, ma face mask. There we go. So let's uh, do this. Let's go here. And let's go to Chrome tab. And let us find this right here. Uh, let's see. Is this it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's show, these, let's show these off for Carlton real quick so people can see uh, how beautiful they are. Wow. Look at these. Amazing. Wow. Look at, look at, look at this one right here. I need to get one. <laughs> I know. I want one. Okay. I'm going to have to hit you up. And the, I'm going to put in my order. I'll, I'll order one for you. Oh my God. I love this one right here with, yes. the, with the lips. They're beautiful. beautiful. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's add him back in here. Carlton, beautiful, beautiful. Carlton, we we need those masks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna order. Yeah. I like oh, well, please. Well, I, you know I got you. I wanted to show them off, so we're gonna move back to the other stuff now. Okay. I appreciate it. No, thank you You're for welcome. that. I really do. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for all you do. Okay. All right. So that was uh, a plug for Carlton because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, but uh, let's see if we have any more comments real quick, and then we're going to move on to a few other things uh, because I want to show a couple of other sections of your work. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, Alex says in the accessory section. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. You know, I went the long way, but thank you so much. Those are great, says Chitachi. Uh, Diana says they are beautiful. Carlton, Carlton, love the masks. <laughs> uh he'll see this he dropped off but he'll see them i place my orders soon yes amazing right. i love oh, that oh my <laughs> because he's this is what it's all about all these props maybe he fell out of his seat <laughs> 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 so anyway but uh wonderful stuff um thank you everybody for being here please continue to share this broadcast what a viewership today over 35 to 40 live viewers sharing it commenting we've had over uh, probably close to 100 comments i couldn't get to them all but claudia and i will answer things and we'll get back to things later uh it can't tackle it all but as we um get closer and closer here uh to the hour i may go a few minutes over because i want to show a couple of other things here uh but remember claudia does this amazing video work but let's get to um, I want to get to the section on your website. That's very also all these nonprofits too, real quick. But let's get to um, this because this means a lot. They all do. But let's get to this section here, Claudia. The drum roll. She's like, "What is he going to pull up here?" What's happening next? <laughs> well, this is important, and we want to get to it. So we're going to get to. Uh, is that it? Yeah. 
Okay, because uh, this is a really important moment in time. Uh, it's always been an important moment. I got bullied as a kid several times, and it's horrible. It's demeaning. It's brutal. It takes such a toll on your personality. I had great friends, so luckily it didn't. But it, it hurts. It hurts tremendously. Claudia, tell us about this body of work. Can you just, are you able to push the image Absolutely. up? Also? Absolutely. Okay, One second. Absolutely. There we go. Great. Yeah. So this is actually um, a collaboration with a friend of mine. He he founded his own nonprofit and he's, you know, he's really into music. He's really, he loves kids. And so he wanted to do something with that, with the anti-bully mm -hmm. um, initiative. And so we kind of collaborated and figured out what we could do. And so we basically invited a whole bunch of our friends to be part of it because we wanted to show the kids and say, look, you know, we're grownups, but a lot of us have gone through something like what you're experiencing right now in school. So all of these folks, they, you know, they bravely shared some of their um, moments and some of their insecurities and vulnerable um, things in the past. And it was, it was really, I, mean, I think I'm just a, a person like I, I always love capturing emotion and I love hearing people's stories. So I think when I can combine that with photography and, and also give people maybe confidence or give people hope, it always, when that comes together, I'm, I'm, I'm at my most happy. I feel that, you know, I'm doing something that feels yeah. important. I'm doing something that feels like it's changing someone's life well, in I, one way. I want people to know that, you know, this is editorial work and commercial work and everything else, but just know that these photos are of the subjects and these are their words. You yeah. know, this isn't like one of those commercials where you see an actor playing somebody. This is Claudia's brilliant work of capturing these uh, these emotions and these feelings. And I read a great quote. I can't remember it exactly, but it was a great quote that I used for promoting the show this week that said, you know, when you're taking a great photo, it's not just you capturing them, but them giving you a moment of them, of their soul, of their yeah. their life and personality, you know? I love that quote. I, I remember you posting that. Um, yeah. And I think it, it really, I think it took me a while to figure that out with my photography, but now I'm really aware of that. That's what it's all about for me, that Right. You uh, you are having this connection with the person that's sitting in front of your camera and you have this special moment together. And if they let you and if they open up to you, you capture this very personal moment. And, and you really I always say you're capturing part of their soul. Yeah. And I think it, it's just a gift that you're getting through your camera and and yeah, through no, just the all. humanity. They're all so powerful. I mean, rejection brings me to my knees. Yeah, that, it's a tough one, man. Projection is not easy. My freckles are the first thing people notice about me. I love freckles, uh, whoever that is in that photo there. I love your freckles. Uh, I used to skip school because of a bully. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, I didn't want to go to school some days. People don't like me because of the way I walk, talk, and dress. Well, let me tell you, you know how to walk, talk, and dress, sir. That is a beautiful photo and your fashion style is on point. Um, and most of my clothes were secondhand. Some of us don't ever experience that. Those that do, it's tough, it's tough. Um, I lost my hair in middle school. Wow, that must have been incredibly tough. So Claudia, you've captured all of these beautifully. Uh, um, um, thank you so much for that powerful work. And you know, there's so much more you know, to cover um, but one of the other things I want to quickly highlight that you've worked on, which I think is really important, is, uh, and I had so many other questions, but you know what? You go with the flow of the show, and I think that's important. And what is that? That is interesting. I have no idea. <laughs> um, I do not know where that is coming from. That is bizarre. I don't know. Okay. It's one of the tabs that were open. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for that interruption in our wonderful I, conversation here. But I thought, you know, we, I thought we got hacked for a second. <laughs> I thought we got hacked. But you know what? The music wasn't bad. So I had wanted to get it all quickly before Facebook strips this off. Soon, <laughs> as very close to home, Claudia, both of my kids were bullied in grade school. Wow. 
Um, yeah, no, it's it's a tough one, and Claudia captured that work beautifully. But let's quickly, as uh, I don't want to go too far over, but let's quickly go to uh, that other section that I wanted to get to. If I didn't lose it here, one second, hold on. And you have so much work, Claudia. Your body of work is amazing. Um, and I want to get, oh, here it is. So I wanted to get to this. Uh, it's called Love Is. And I wanted you to expand on it for a brief moment because I could not go past this because it's so, let me get to the photos here. They are just so, so beautiful in black and white. And I know I wanted to bring these up for Peter's sake too, because I know Peter's such a huge fan of black and white. Um, tell us yeah. about this real quick. I'm sorry to rush you. I don't want to rush you too much. So yeah, so I mean, we didn't really get to talk so much about personal projects, but basically I am always looking for that when I'm, you know, trying to squeeze that in between when I'm busy with work. But right. I just feel like it's so good for any photographer to pursue things that are really just for you, at least in the beginning. And you know, so, you know, just finding something that you're passionate about, something that you can push your creativity a little bit with. So I've always been doing that. And yeah, the I'm love is project. I, you know, like you said earlier, I'm a big hugger and I'm I'm a I'm a very loving person. I, I just I, I thrive when I'm around people with good energy. And so I was thinking, you know, what kind of couples do I have around in my network that I feel like are uh, are just carrying that love out so obviously and so beautifully and their connection and so I kind of just started thinking who who do I have who who right. really shows that right and then so I started reaching out and um actually if you go back to the very first couple sure sure they sure. were because these are kind of chronologically okay no actually not really but this was my very first couple okay and I'm so glad that they were kind of my guinea pigs they were very patient because yeah. I was tweaking the lighting and everything mm -hmm. but I just you know, those sessions, they gave me so much too, in a sense of, you know, right. I would meet with them, right. we would talk, they would tell me their story, how they met, how long yeah. they've been together, May what I read makes them words? unique. Yeah. Uh, it sure. says, Alex and Vincent, love is loving, loving the one you are with completely, unselfishly, and especially when the going gets rough. Yeah. That is what love is to them. I love, you know, some of the Bobby and Wendy, love is forever. I actually, I want to shout out to Wendy really quick because Wendy and Bobby. So Wendy is the founder of an amazing nonprofit, Artists yes. for World Peace. And I've been working with her for, I think it's been nine years or so. I've been to Tanzania with her three times. We've traveled the world and she does amazing work with children. She's brought medical care to Tanzania and other right. places. Amazing person. Bobby is her right hand man he's there for her always they have a beautiful relationship together and uh, um, when i mean they're my people and so they had to be part of this series and wow I'm really well, i want everybody to to, i want everybody to check out the love is section on claudia's website we'll put her website up here we've done it all throughout the show but one of the things that i want to do real quickly since she mentioned that because it's so worthy of it and i'm going a little over here because your work is just worthy of it uh okay, that's, okay. That's, <laughs> We've uh, 20, over oh, 30 viewers still watching, so I know we're doing good. Stay with us. <laughs> yeah, stay with us here for a few more minutes. But I want to stop sharing this real quick, and I want to then go to some of the stills for your uh, beautiful work uh, in Tanzania. I'm not going to yeah. go to the video, but I'm going to go to, uh, because it's longer, but I'm going to go to your work on Tanzania here real quick. And I'm going to share the screen and we're going to bring up that beautiful work right now. Uh, and I'm going to go to it. And we're not going to stay on here long, but we're going to definitely show some of the beautiful portraits and work that you did in Tanzania. I know a gentleman named Richard Leiter who uh, goes to Tanzania all the time uh, that works there uh, teaching about purpose and other things. Mm -hmm. And by the way, while I'm at it, if I may, before I forget, Claudia, I'm sorry, but we give everybody else shout outs. I want to give a shout out to my dear friend, Emilio Pardo, 
who is a guiding light for me in this life and who's sponsoring this show, helping me keeping it going, uh, you know, with certain production costs and other things. Thank you, Emilio. Emilio is a wonderful, wonderful man and a great brand expert. So thank you and God bless you, Emilio. Uh, I'll talk to you later today, bud. Um, but look at these beautiful works, uh, these beautiful portraits, you know, just gorgeous. Yeah, you guys, if I can plug that too, um, check yeah, out please. artistsforworldpeace.org. Yes. This is where you can learn all about the nonprofit that Wendy founded. And, you know, she's, we call her Mama Wendy because <laughs> she's the mom of so many kids around the world. And she's made such a difference in so many lives. And you know, I love her dearly. I love the work with her. And, you know, especially in these times, we need nonprofits more than ever. Oh, we do. Um, we do. So, yeah. So we do. What is, check, what, is, check what, is, out. what is the website again? It's called artistsforworldpeace.org. All right. I just wanted to make sure I found the right exact. Uh, here it is. Artists for World Peace. And uh, we're going to oh, find Lord. it here because this is what we do. We make sure we acknowledge we acknowledge the important institutions out there who are doing valuable work such as this. And we're going to give it its Perfect. plug. Perfect. Yeah. And, right. they're, you know, they're on, they're on social. They, you know, they are very active. Right. They do great events and fundraisers. I mean, yeah. Just right. So this is it right here, folks. Artists for World Peace. You can donate. You can check out their work at uh, Children of Peace and all the other things that they have up on their website right here. Uh, the Those are all kids. <laughs> yeah, the wonderful videos. I'm going to be careful with some of the videos because if they have music, Facebook can strip things down. But look at this. You can get to know all of these beautiful children and their stories. Artists for World Peace, folks, uh, please find them. There it is, artistsworldpeace.org. Atun uh, put it up there. Thank you, Atun. Uh, Claudia, thank you so much for sh uh, sharing that with us. I wanted to get to that. I would not yeah. pass it up, no matter how much extra time it took. But we're coming to a close here. I want everybody to find Claudia's work. Uh, I want to, them to learn more about her. We could go on and on about her work. It's so unbelievable, but we don't want to, you know, uh, do that. We want to stick to the plan. And um, also, I want to bring Peter back on for one second because Peter. Peter, Peter's photos this week grabbed me. He did some photos. Why don't you tell us real quick, Peter, about it, what you shot and what I'm going to show. Oh, uh, I don't even remember the name of the comment. Um, okay. It's okay. Uh, it was a comment that's gonna that came through just um, it's right now, and um, I think they said it's not gonna be around for sixty eight hundred years, and I had to go out and witness this um, just due to a couple friends who had posted other images, mm -hmm. and uh, this was uh, four o'clock in the morning um, wow. up in Clear Lake, California. Wow. And uh, it's just uh, an amazing scene um, to be able to go out and um, photograph something that's. Look at look know. at that. I mean, wow. I mean, so, Peter, come on quickly. What did you use? What did you shoot it with for the geeks and all us techies out there? Real quick, what did you do with this? Uh, Canon R with a 400-2.8 and a 70-200. Wow. I mean, what a beautiful. This is, Folks, check out Peter De Silva. And if you want a print of this, it's yours. Uh, he's going to sell it to you because it's. It, I'm a. I market my people, man. <laughs> gotta check this out. Look, who wouldn't want this on their wall? I could look at this all night with a beer in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we need we need some beers and we need other things. A uh, glass of wine. Uh, you know, enjoy a little thing at night after with all this stress. Um, and I don't even drink, but <laughs> <laughs> neither do I. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know what? Once in a while, a good beer, or a glass of wine in this day and age is a good thing. <laughs> so, but anyway, beautiful stuff. But I also wanted to show real quick this amazing photo uh, that Claudia took, uh, that Peter took of Claudia. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> what a, what a, you remember that trip? Wow, I do. Yeah, that was that was actually another work trip for L'Oreal, and Peter was so nice, and he picked me up after the after the job, and he gave me a little tour. We spent some time, and then he drove me to the airport. It was wonderful, yeah, and he took yeah. some amazing portraits of me. Yeah, 
And there's another wow. beautiful one near, near Pier 39, by the way. I'm going to plug this because Pier 39 is where the aquarium of the bay is. <laughs> the Gigi Mentors Group uh, worked with them before this COVID crisis hit on the sea lions, 30th anniversary of the sea lions making it their home. Please help these important institutions, Aquarium of the Bay, all these places that need your help, especially now while they're not open. Please support them, donate to them, help our museums, help our nonprofits, help our uh, aquariums. Please don't forget about them, people. Uh, but I also want to mention my other photo of the week right now, which I had to show. It's amazing. And then we're going to take this to an end here, folks. Right here. Wow. <laughs> I mean, talk about a photo. Gary Hershorn, uh, an incredible photographer here in New York and New Jersey, friends with Peter. They hang out a lot. Uh, at least they did when he used to come here with and hang out with Gary. Captured this this week of lightning striking the Hudson River, right framing like a wishbone, the World Trade Center. I mean, Peter, what do you say? And Claudia, what do you say about a photo like this? Stunning. I mean, <laughs> I, I've actually never photographed a thunderstorm in my life. So I'm in awe and how, how the timing, I, I mean, it's really, I think technically the exposure and everything, it's it's not easy because no, there's so much left. No, I dropped. And the cool thing about this is I'll share it in the comments, folks, of this post of the live stream. I'll find the article. Peter talked extensively about this incredible weather app. Peter, I'm sorry, Gary, Gary. talked <laughs> about this extensive uh, uh, use of his photo of this app that on his phone that tells him where the lightning's going to strike, how the storms are approaching. I've got to get that thing and play with it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'll be like a kid in a candy store, right, Peter? Oh, uh, Gary, Gary's the master of of this yeah. view. He yeah. just knows exactly where to be, yeah. when to be, and and if 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 you just check out his work, uh, yeah. you'll never imagine the Manhattan skyline as Gary's captured it for for decades. Yeah, it's Gary, uh, Gary G A R Y Hershorn, uh, H E R S H O R N. So okay. make sure you check him out. Uh, I forgot to create a banner for him. Sorry, Gary, but I plugged you and I wanted to show your photo. What a stunning photo. So listen, Peter, Claudia, uh, thank you so much for being here. Peter, thank you for helping us surprise Claudia. Thank you I for having you. me back again. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Thank you for having me back and oh. being able to uh, take a chance to see Claudia. <laughs> you introduced me to Claudia, the magic of social media, <laughs> through my social media and visual strategy work. I want to pull it all together and uh, show people what it's about, show people what you guys do, show people what I do. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing when it's done right. So thank you so much. Guys, I'm going to move on to a few things here. Um, and all to our, all our viewers, thank you for sharing this broadcast about Claudia. I'm going to move on to some closing stuff. Please stay behind stage and I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, actually, I want to give Claudia, Claudia, in uh, some parting words for everybody. I'm going to give you a one shot here to share <gasps> some time. parting words with everybody. Hold on. Let me stop the screen and let me give you the spotlight for 30 seconds to just say something to the crowd. Oh, sorry. You muted me. <laughs> why don't you give uh, everybody a few parting words and uh, yeah. tell them, uh, you know, um, uh, what you want to tell them? I so first of all, I'm I'm just touched at how many people came out to tune in and watch and and hear us talk about my work, and I really really appreciate that. Like we said before, the photo community is amazing, and I I love you guys and. Um, I love what Stefan does with Thank this you. because it's so important and he does it in such a beautiful way as in, you know, just highlighting what what we sometimes don't Thanks. see. And, and just I love, Stefan, what you pick, the work that you were drawn to, the way you talk about my work. Really, you know, really honored to be here. And your your yes, work uh, your work gave me the passion and the energy that I need to continue to carry carry forward with this world we're living in right now. And knowing you gives me even more passion and energy to never give up, to keep pushing ahead. We can't let this uh, continue. We have to fix a lot of things, and we need to, and we will. Shitachi says thank you so much for being here. Wonderful. We have more comments. Flavio from Brazil, beautiful show. Flavio, you're coming on one day. 
Tim Sohn, love you. Uh, love when you bring surprises on your show, Stephen <laughs> Catlin. And Tim, I love you too, man. You're my colleague and dear friend. Thank you, brother. Uh, so thank you to everybody. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to close out the show, Claudia. I'll be right back, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, folks, this has been another wonderful hour of the Spinach Social Hour. A little over today, but where Claudia is worth every minute. I don't care what anybody says. And it's, uh, it's the way I wanted to handle it today. Uh, so, but what I do want to do is I want to quickly remind everybody my Spinach Social is every Saturday at 10 a.m., live on Twitter and Facebook. If you guys can nudge LinkedIn, I might get my LinkedIn approval and I might be able to stream it on LinkedIn soon. Come on, LinkedIn. I submitted my thing. Get me going, man. Everybody wants to know about these photographers on uh, corporate wise. So let's do that. StreamYard, love the platform. Uh, amazing. Uh, and um, I want to get to some promos here real quick. So uh, next week, most importantly, is my guest. I am so thrilled to bring on the great Simi Joy, uh, Culinary Optics, uh, an incredible photographer that does wow work with food and so many other things. Wow, Simi, I can't wait to bring you on. What a treat. She is a premier, premier food photographer. I love her work. So join us next week, 10 a.m. for Simi's work. Uh, and she's based out of Chicago. And then also, please, folks, make sure you join up for Muckrack's Fundamentals of Social Media as we talked about social media in this show. Uh, it's what I do as a social media strategist. I helped produce this show. Uh, and uh, and course, the fundamentals of, well, the show, the course was produced by Linda Bernstein, but I helped produce the, the actual part of it that's online where you take it with Sri. And I did all the production work with him on this and his office hours with Muckrack. The fundamentals of social media for journalists, PR pros, and everyone. Sign up today. Thousands have mrac.co backslash social. MRA social is the hashtag. And then finally, tomorrow, join Sri Srinivasan um, for his Sunday NYT read-along, which is one of the mainstays uh, on, on, on social media and online. So this week with Mary C. Curtis, award-winning journalist, trainer, and speaker, and many other things, former NYT editor, colleague of mine. I uh, never met Mary, but wonderful. Chitachi says, yes, you need to be on LinkedIn. Tell him, Chitachi. Tell him. <laughs> Anyways, join Sri's NYT read along tomorrow morning at 8 30. Sri is amazing, my dearest colleague and one of my dearest friends, my brother in arms in social media. I don't like the word arms, but I said it. Um, thank you so much, Sri, for everything you do for all of us. And I love working with you every project we get. Uh, so, and one final show, she's on call quick. Tune in tomorrow, Sundays at 11. Dr. Sujana, Dr. Marina have some wonderful guests. They're talking about this COVID crisis every week, produced by Rose Horowitz and Vandana, Vandana Menon and Sri. Check them out. Find it. She's on call tomorrow on every avenue of opportunity on social media. That's it, folks. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to say good day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of everyone around you. God bless. Do the right thing. Wear your masks. Thank you so much. Spin it social hour next week, 10 a.m., Find us everywhere. Find me everywhere. Thank you very much. Be well. Take care.